Greetings ladies and metal gents and welcome to this narration of the web series The Last Terran. If you are new to the series there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 19 So, what did she think of me? Rix asked once they're back aboard the Esperanto. I do not believe Station Master Blyne is quite as afraid of you now. I appreciate that you took my advice regarding not showing your teeth, Munder said, hunting behind with the walking frame, feeling less and less sink loss between themselves and the walking frame itself. Using the Quinn Station as a loop through to the walking frame had helped, but it required a hardline connection. Munter looked at the station. It was a serviceable station, a bit on the lower side that Munter might have expected, but functional for organics particularly one station at the edge of a system to respond to emergencies. There were 38 subsystems I were due for overhaul, 10 systems which were likely to fail in the next year unless major action was taken, and another 5 that needed power down for Munter to even begin to ascertain their status, suggesting that they hadn't been operated in a substantial length of time. Munter opted to investigate some of what the station knew about Station Master Blind. Of the 271 different Quinn to have boarded this particular station, Station Master Blind had the most time on platform to date, with one exception, Master Mechanic Tyxis. Blind was of no house within the Quinn Union, with the record showing limited communications with Quinn of almost any house outside the associated business communications. Mantum needed to know more about the Quinn in general, so they tapped into their girl neck link and copied down the organic type guide to the Quinn species. It felt ridiculous, but without a connection to Tacitnet, it was as good as Mantu could hope for. It took them several minutes of review. Blind was apparently not antisocial, but did not seek out the same level of social bonding that most members of the species. She did not appear to express any obvious xenophobic or xenophilic tendencies other than the instinctive fear reaction to the Terran, who apparently looked enough like a predator to invoke such a reaction. She appeared to be well-groomed, but appeared to have some extraneous fashion accessories on her feathers. Without going into more advanced search, Mando could only guess at the reasoning behind the accessories, particularly as some of them would appear to impair the natural flight ability of a Quinn. Not excessively, but certainly decreasing maximum capability. Blind was in the middle age of a species, medically assisted Quinn having a maximum lifespan of no greater than 90 years, with exceptionally few exceptions. According to the station logs, she was a creature of habit, maintained a strict regimen and functioning adequately in her duties. Communications and reports were businesslike and only contained limited issues that were likely overlooked due to linguistic shift that Manta was unaware of compared with the lexicon provided. Manta looked deeper at the Quinn and the system in particular. The Quinn had set up the system almost instantly upon having reached the stars and having been greeted by the galactic community. Even though they were slow to react technologically, they had seized upon the need to control an adequate volume of space for their species to grow. Unfortunately, through a bureaucratic and exploratory blunder, they had filed a claim to the system prior to determining the status of the two habitable worlds. In truth, both worlds would be much more tolerable to Terrans, if Rix was any judge, with reasonable pre-planning for the associated colonial needs. Even the more watery planet filled with predators would likely be reasonable to the Terrans if the stories that Rix had told about Terrasol were even slightly true. Rix had even claimed that the grand sculptures of Mars had made an entire city of glass from the native sand. Mantu could not verify this since they had no listing of Mars in their local data. But it was not unreasonable feat given the right materials. That though, it was likely to have been less of a city and more of a monument of some kind. Turning back to the Quinn, their culture appeared to be centric on a type of kerentocracy. The reasons for this were unclear in the guide, as it was a cultural hang-up that had persisted with the Quinn into the void. Very few Quinn traveled much beyond their declared space, and those that did were often houseless or traders. The Quinn had elevated themselves into the void, where the galactic community had quickly visited and shared many of the common technologies which should have been revolutionary to the Quinn of the time. Manta scanned the whole of the document but found no reference as to whether the Terrans were present or not. The Terrans would still have been in existence, so it wasn't impossible that the Quinn might have met Terrans. It was not recorded in this reference, though. The Quinn were typically fairly conservative culture, moving slowly forward within the only occasional leap forward. This was not surprising given their gerontocracy. But the foundation of new houses was a rarity and typically marked an equivalent technological, social, and medical shift within the culture. 
Presently, three of the older houses of the Quinn were in decline, the leadership opting to press to stay within more traditional confines. Consequently, five of the youngest houses of the Quinn were on the rise, competing primarily with each other than with the other more established houses. This was apparently due to the younger houses focusing on void-based enterprises and professions instead of professions of more close to Quinn societal norms. The nearest other full-status species to the Quinn were the Remblex, a quadrupedal reptilian species which was exceptionally isolationist even by galactic terms, than the Myriad, which had more difficulty than most species in terms of adapting their vessels to support both their aquatic dwelling needs as well as their life support. The Quinn were not pacifistic, but they were not overly aggressive outside food and mating. Since their integration into the galactic community, only minor skirmishes had occurred, and those had been described as resulting from miscommunications, resulting from mismatched lexicons and linguistic drift. Manta looked back at the station master. She appeared to be moving rapidly through the station, but in a repetitive way. While this was not energy efficient, it was an apparent need to purge the need to move and flee away from the predator Terran. Manto decided to prompt Blind via the heads-up display that she was still wearing. Are you undergoing a distressing event following meeting Captain Rix? I... I am. How is he so big? She replied. Uncertain evolutionary presses to suggest development on a low habitability world of high gravity and significant competition leading to the need for social cooperation and selective mating supporting ongoing evolutionary pressures. Which, uh, means what? Terrans could likely easily inhabit both the semi-habitable worlds within the inner portion of the system without obvious needs or enhancements or specialty tools. Long-term habitation would require some support, but would not require special considerations. So, what he said about looking for a colony, correct. He was part of the Terran colony convoy to the system. As a result of the technology involved, I am unable to ascertain as to how best to locate similar vessels. I... I've never heard of anything having been discovered here. Are you sure it was here? Captain Rix programmed the coordinates based on memory and confirmed with an offline databank to which I do not have access. How long do Terrans naturally live? Is it possible they all died out and their stuff just got destroyed? Based on limited available records and anecdotal evidence from Captain Rix, Terrans naturally lived to greater than 110 years old and could be medically assisted to live up to as long as 240 years. Really? How old is Captain Rix? Unknown. It has never come up in conversation. Based on anecdotal evidence, though, I suggest that Captain Rix is approximately 45 Terran years old biologically. Well, given what those two worlds are like, I'd have a hard time believing that any species could last that long on them naturally, unless they're born to it, even then. Tonker with the assessment. However, given the construction of the TSS Esperanto as a baseline, it is highly likely that some ruins would have even remained if the colony had been established as planned. I've read the scan reports. Best of the Quinn scanners. There's almost nothing there. Even the resource extractors can barely use them. We mostly use them for science and atmosphere on the inner system. Given current technological level of Quinn vessels equipped to conduct such scans from orbit, it is likely that they did not miss something then. Then, where are your Terrans supposed to be? Uncertain. Any idea why he wants the connection to Galnet? None at all. Can he read Galactic Standard at least? No. I have got him to ruins, and that's as far as I've managed so far. Is he capable of learning galactic standing writing? Most likely, but due to his species' age, it is unlikely that he will absorb it as readily as a younger member of the species might. Good. No offense, but it's a little creepy having you doing the translation all the time. No offense, registered. Translation services are a major component of tacit culture. But you're not in your ship, right? Correct. Why not? Manta waited for a full 30 seconds, trying to gauge how best to describe the problem statement to Blyne. Following some queries regarding Terrans and potential sensory gaps, I was reported as malfunctioning and requiring a major repair, up to the including a reformulation. As a part of this, Rix reached the conclusion that it is unreasonable for Terrans to have been declared extinct without a clear and valid reason, and that my inquiries and subsequent reports as malfunctioning is intended to eliminate himself and to silence my inquiries. Manto allowed Bly in a few moments to absorb this wall of text. I do not know why this would be, but a process within myself supports Rix's conclusions. So are you two some kind of fugitives? Not in the context in which you would be familiar. Well, explain it then. Rix is wanted for recovery into a state of protective custody. Inquiries for details or further information have been rejected prior to disconnection from Tazinet. 
I am likely sought by Tessinet in order to determine my functional status. This is not an unusual status, but not being located within myself is an unusual status. What? What happened to the rest of you? Uncertain. Docking clamps are all that remains from our FTL translation. Given the energies involved, it is possible that the rest of myself was destroyed. Oh no! While this is not a common occurrence, once the miscommunications have been resolved regarding Rix's Terran status, by non-malfunctioning, I'll be installed into a new self. But still, your concern is appreciated. Blind had stopped moving, and appeared to be breathing heavily as if needing to recover from having been active for this duration. Do you have duties to which you need to attend? Not really. I mean, I need to watch the scopes, but you two are a lot more interesting than any scopes. Hey, Em, can you check to see if she's having anything regular I can eat? Captain Rix has an interjection. He requests to know what manner of foods you have and if you are willing to share. Of course I have extra. Have to in case somebody comes in and has to stay a while. Like you two might be. Or at least until you two have a girl net link. But, uh, what does the Terran eat? Almost anything, if they are hungry enough. Or so, Rix tells me. Okay, well, uh, I don't mind sharing my mealworms, if he's okay with that. What are your feelings regarding mealworms? Ew! What? Like bugs? <sighs> I don't do bugs, Em. No way. I'm a star confederate, not some TCC sap. He does not appear to be enthused about this meal option. Perhaps if you could provide a list, I can attempt to discern what he would be more willing to consume. I'm guessing neither of you has heard of a thing called polite rejection, then. I am not as familiar with the Ganics as most tacits, and Rix is most likely suffering from psychological effects, but you're overriding his more tactful social skills. Internally, Manto added, I hope, to that statement, but wasn't certain where the Terran was concerned. Rix tended to have the social skills of a rogue black hole skimming through a soda system so far in Manto's experience. He wasn't unaware of himself, but he was also relatively obtuse when it came to choices of words. Maybe so, but that is no excuse for not having manners. I apologize, but I cannot speak for Rix. It is also worth noting that there may be a biochemical items which Rix may or may not be able to consume. Fair enough, I guess. I'll send my standard food list over the common system. I'll do that before I try and figure out how to get the autofabricator set up. Your assistance is a credit to yourself. Blind had started to walk towards the command deck and stopped, having a small version of a laugh that she and Rix had had earlier. May I ask what is funny? It's just been a long time since I think anyone has said that to me. For Quinn, it's all about being credit to your elders or a credit to your house. By contrast for Terrans, it appears to be much more in favor to credit to oneself while being a credit to one's community. Huh. Well, either way, thank you, Tacit Manto. Just Manto. End of chapter. I would quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and Patreons. Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Lord Azrakal, Dragzoon WRE, Holly's sister, Arcadian. Thank you very much.